I finally found my battery so I can start recording videos again. The feature I want to talk about today is the duress pin slash password feature Graphene OS released a few months ago. So first we'll start off by looking at the documentation and then I'll show how to set it up on a device and what the actual wipe process looks like once you enter the duress pin slash password. So first looking at the official documentation, which is always the best place to go first, and I will link that down below. So Graphene OS provides users with the ability to set a duress pin slash password that will irreversibly wipe the device along with any installed eSIMs, great benefit. Once entered anywhere where the device credentials are requested, such as the lock screen or any other prompt that the OS shows you asking for your pin or password. This part's pretty impressive. The wipe does not require a reboot and it cannot be interrupted. So once it's entered, all data on your device is completely inaccessible and you will never have access to it again. So take that as a warning. Be careful with this. Once you set it, do not enter it just to test for any reason whatsoever because all your data will be gone. Both a duress pin and password is needed to account for the different unlock methods that user profiles may use. So you might have one user profile with a pin and another with a password. That's why you need to set both of these. And this last part to note that if your duress pin is the same as the actual unlock pin, the actual unlock pin will take precedence. So let's say your duress pin is 1234 and your unlock pin is 1234. Once you enter 1234 into your device, it'll be unlocked. You will not wipe the device. So one more thing I want to mention before I get into the live demo Make sure you check into any local laws or regulations regarding this feature. You know, if you're at the airport and they ask you for your PIN and instead you enter this and your device is wiped, who knows what could happen? You know, destruction of evidence. There could be all sorts of different things and caveats that would apply. So make sure you understand the ramifications of using this feature for wherever you are in the world before actually using it. So with that out of the way, let's check out what this actually looks like. So here I have a Google Pixel with Graphene OS installed. The only thing I've done is set a pin code, which is one, two, three, four, five. So in order to set a duress pin slash password according to the documentation, we go into settings, scroll down to security, and then we go to duress password. We need to enter our device pin to authenticate that it's us. So once you finish reading the text on the page, you can select the add duress pin. So I'm going to set the pin to 1111 and the password to QQQQ. Once we select add, again, you see a warning about what will happen if you enter this. Select proceed. And now on this screen, you can either update your duress pin or password or delete it. So now let's see what the actual wipe looks like. So we're all pretty familiar with the lock screen. If you enter it there, the phone will be erased. So to show you a little more non-standard scenario, if we go into settings and back to security, in order to set a fingerprint, you have to enter your device pin. So we're gonna select the fingerprint unlock. And now this is an example of the OS prompting us for our pin. Instead of entering my actual pin, I'm going to enter my duress pin. So you're going to see it's going to say wrong pin. The device powers off and the irreversible wipe has occurred along with wiping all installed eSIMs. So now at this point, you can power the device back on. I'm just going to give this a minute to power up. So this is the screen you'll see after the wipe occurs. You can just go down to the factory reset. It's important to note this feature does not break the device in any way. It just makes the data completely inaccessible. So we do select the option for factory reset. Confirm that. And now we have a fresh installation of Graphene OS. So whether or not this feature is applicable to you and your threat model is a personal decision and something you need to decide. I would caution against setting it to something simple like one, two, three, four. If someone has your device and as a joke, they answer that pin, now your device is wiped and that would not be good. 
I do want to point out one other site that I think someone posted on the Graphene OS forum. Someone did some duress password QA testing. They just went through a bunch of different scenarios to test it out. Thought it was something cool to check out, so I'll link that down below. And one other use I saw someone mention for this feature is you take a piece of paper, write your duress pin code on it, and put it in your phone case. Therefore, if someone finds your phone and they think you just left your pin code in there because you're forgetful, they'll enter it and your device is wiped. So that's one option. I like that. Something to consider. So for the last year, I've wanted to start a podcast. And when I started looking at where I could host it, I couldn't really find an option that had everything I was looking for from a privacy perspective. So instead, I decided to build that. And it's called Yellow Ball. You can check it out at yellowball.fm. I would appreciate it if you could sign up and test it out. Let me know if you find any bugs. All you need to sign up is a username and a password. I know many of you are not looking to start a podcast, but if you're like me, then in your friends and family, you're likely the go-to person when someone has a tech question. So if you have someone come to you and they ask you about starting a podcast, if you could suggest they check out Yellow Ball, I would really appreciate it. And keep an eye out because in the next one to two weeks, I'll be publishing the first episode of my podcast, which is going to be called In the Shell. It's going to be different stories from tech and different events that have happened in the past and things I find interesting. So if you're watching this video a week or two after it's been published, check down below. I'll link it in the description. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down below, and I'll see you next time.